بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Sometimes we fail to bear in mind that every one of us on this earth has been sentenced to death all of us have been sentenced to death the difference is the date of execution is different and the method is different some people will get the sentence and it will be a penalty and torment and difficulty and hardship not only at the time of death but also after death other people for them the sentence will be a bonus it will be a reward it will be a pleasure it will be an enjoyment it will be an ecstasy the sentence the choice depends on us now the average person when they wake up every day they have concern and worry somebody might have worry about number one sustenance number two family number three himself so his entire life revolves around these three factors and not the concern for the year after if that is the case then shaitan and nafs has convinced us otherwise we are in a scheme we in the house of deception we in the foundation the markas the arena of deception and we are part of the plan if we look at one self then a person's concern about the external beauty so how much time energy resource are spent on this human body so that we want to preserve it or show others how preserved how young what traits externally we possess secondly the beautification of the external so whether it's clothing whether it's makeup whether it's jewelry whether it's specs glasses every avenue on the external aspect a person spends and dedicates their life on that then secondly family so a person is concerned whether it's the safety of their family whether it's the nutrition the nourishment the sustenance the upbringing the preservation of their family and thirdly for these two one makes effort on his sustenance but if you look at all these factors it circulates and triangulates around one thing an attachment to materialism so either we are attached to dunya or we are attached to akhira either we are attached to the creation or we are attached to the creator of the creation so man's general worry and concern is of the world he needs but he forgets the greatest concern the needs of the year after the needs of akhira for example one worries food, about food nourishment in dunya but he's not concerned about the hunger in the qabr he's worried about the drink of this world but he's not worried about quenching the thirst in the akhirat in the qabr is worried about the clothing of this world but he doesn't know that his clothing in the kafan in the qabr he'll wear a simple piece of cloth and in akhirat will be resurrected unclothed he is worried about his conveyance in this world but he doesn't realize when he dies he'll be driven on the shoulders of men and your conveyance in the year after will be your amal is worried about his house in this world but is not worried about the eternal house the qabr he is worried about his company in this world his companionship but is not worried that he's going to be alone in the qabr he is worried about the luxuries and the enjoyments of this world is not concerned about the torment and the punishment of the akhirah 
He's worried about protection and safety in this world. But he's not worried about the hardships to be faced in year after. He's worried about position and status in this world. But he does not realize that actual honor is in the honor of the Akhirah. An actual disgrace will be the disgrace in the year after. So one has to focus and realize what is my purpose of life and why has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent me. As that Ali radiallahu anhu used to say, highlighting we've got a lot to say on the tongue but no action. We are just words. من جمع ست خصال لم يدع للجنة مطلبا ولا عن النار مهربا Whoever gathers and combines six qualities there will be nothing left for them to pursue and to search and to qualify for Jannah and there will be nothing left for them as a sanctuary from Jahannam. They've done enough as a refuge, as a retreat, and as an escape from the fire of Jahannam. You recognize Allah and then obey Him. It's easy to say, La ilaha illallah. Allah is my Rabb. But فأطاعه, we physically abide and obey the commandments and the awamir of Allah. وَعَرَفَ الشَّيْطَانِ فَعَصَاهُ To recognize shaitan, everybody says shaitan is evil, is bad. فَعَصَاهُ But the kamal is what? To disobey shaitan, to reject his whispering. Number three, وَعَرَفَ الحق To recognize the truth. Then to comply with it, to follow the truth. So I know I need to read Salah, I need to make tilawat of Quran, but who's following it? فَأَلْقَاهُ To recognize batil, to recognize evil, and to abstain from sin, to abstain from disobedience. وَعَرَفَ الدُّنْيَا فَرَفَضَهَا to recognize who this dunya is, why am I here in this dunya, and then to abstain from dunya. And as mentioned previously, you can have a trillion dollars, but no love in your heart. Farafadaha, you have abstained. And you can have one cent in your pocket and you love it, then you've engaged with dunya. وَعَرَفَ الْآخِرَةِ فَطَلَبَهَا To recognize Akhirah and then to seek it, to endeavor, to strive, to find this Jannah, to find this Akhirah. So the point of Ali radiallahu an was that we should not suffice by just mere words, but our words need to be backed by action. Hassan Basri used to say, Rahim Allahu Aqwaman kanati dunya indahum wadi'an. May Allah have mercy. May Allah's mercy descend on those people. That they have the dunya as a trust. Allah has entrusted us with this body. Allah has entrusted us with family. Allah has trust entrusted us with wealth. Allah has entrusted us with time. Allah has entrusted us with life. Take all these bounties of Allah, these amanat, fa'adduha, and hand it over to whom Allah has entrusted you with. Allah has told you, use your body like this, use your wealth like this, upbring and make tarbit of your children like this and your family. Utilize your time like this, utilize your wealth and your assets and your potential like this. Then leave this world lightly, without any burden. 
because we've been given in amana a trust and we fulfill the amana when somebody gives you an amana you've got a what they got somebody's amana the day you gave it back to them you can sleep peacefully why because you fulfill the requirements those people in the world if they utilize the amana of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly then they can sleep peacefully in the qabr they can sleep peacefully in the qabr you say man nafasaka fi dinika fanafishu whoever challenges you in deen take on the challenge i'll make so many khatams i'll strive so much in the path of allah i will build so much masajid i will sponsor so many students in the uh, madaris when somebody challenges you for deen take on the challenge and somebody says okay i'm going to challenge you on dunya bigger bank balance better portfolio bigger greater mansion palatial homes thus watch this brand this us what you do throw it back in your in his face tell him it's not on it's not on i'm not on for the challenge I've been created for something more great, more noble, more exemplary. Otherwise, this dunya is deception. And the people of dunya, deception. When will we wake up? They say a woman went uh, into a hunting store, a gun store, to buy a rifle. So they asked some questions. So she said, it's for my husband. It's for my husband. So then when they were specking it, they asked her, did he tell you what sights, the telescope, what sights to get? The assistant asked her, did your husband indicate what sights he needed? So she said, are you kidding? Are you kidding? He doesn't even know I'm going to shoot him. He doesn't even know I am going to shoot him. So deception, dunya is only about deception. And unfortunately, many don't take lesson. We fall for the trap, we make toba, we fall again. We fall for the trap, make toba, fall again. We should continue making toba, but la yul dakhul mu'min. I believe it doesn't get caught by the same hole twice he doesn't get bitten by the same hole twice three people who are hunters they hide a plane they chartered a flight and they went buffalo hunting so as they landed the pilot said this is a very small plane you can only bring one so they thought so probably if they're lucky they'll get more than that but they ended up killing three so they brought the trophies on the plane. So the pilot said, I warned you, I told you, only one only. The plane cannot handle that. So one of them said, you know what, the pilot last year told us the same thing. So yes, $150. Can you please help us out? Make a plane. So the pilot said, okay, I'm going to try. And uh, the plane took off. And after takeoff, the plane crashed. So one of the hunters got up and was in a state of bewilderment. And he asked his companion, where are we? Where are we? So his friend who was also in that state looked around and said, about 100 meters from where we crashed last year. From 100 meters where we crashed last year. So we made a mistake, we got it wrong. Are we taking lessons? Are we still going into that same routine, same daily pattern, same scenario, without any change? Ramadan upon Ramadan, year upon year. We are ready. Once we were youth, now we are parents, now we are grandparents. And yet we carry on, on the same course on the same trajectory. So dunya innakum ala bayyinatim min rabbikum ma lam tadhar fikum sakratan 
the intoxication of dunya, it makes one insane mad. And when you try to convince a mad person also, you'll think so you're mad by the time you finished, you'll get mad because his insanity is so insane, you can't handle it anymore. So dunya is like that. It's a world of mad people, a house of madness. And the friends of Allah are the spectators. The friends of Allah are the same people. Those that have yaqeen in akhirat and they spend in the time properly, then they are the spectators. They say uh, in a mental hospital, a doctor was doing his rounds and he entered a patient's room. So one patient was sitting on the floor and he was sawing an imaginary piece of wood in half. And another patient was dangling from the ceiling by his feet. So the doctor asked the first patient, what are you doing? So he replied, can't you see I'm sawing this piece of wood in half? So he asked, and what's he doing? So he said, oh, he's my friend, he's insane. He's a bit crazy, he thinks so, he's a light bulb. So the doctor could see that the person who was hanging upside down, his face was going red as he was hung on the ceiling. So he told the first person, if he's your friend, you should get him down before he hurts himself. So he said, what? You want me to work in the dark? You want me to work in the dark? So this world is the world of mad houses. Just when first one person thinks so he's doing the same thing, if we ask the doctor, we ask the ulama, we ask the mashayikh, they'll tell you how insane we are. There was a patient who had spent 12 years in a mental asylum and the doctors were hopeful that this person maybe he's, he's recuperated and is responding now to the treatment. So they said, okay, they would do a final test and to see if he was cured. So they took him to a stadium. As they entered the stadium, uh, the seats, there was a sign on there saying that wet paint. So the doctors carried on as normal because it was the test. But they were elated and delighted when the patient placed a newspaper on the seat before sitting down. So now they were sure this person is cured and we can release him and discharge him. So when he got back to the hospital, they asked him that, uh, tell us the wisdom of placing the newspaper on the seat. So he replied, so I'd be higher up and have a better view. So I'd be higher up and have a better view. So sometimes we think so we got it under control, but when we don't make mashwara and spend time in the company of the ulama and the mashayikh, we think so we're doing things right, but we got it all wrong in this mad house of dunya. This man was convinced that he was a chicken, so every day he would go around making the clucking noise and pecking the ground. So the neighbor noticed this, so he asked the wife, why don't you take him to the doctor and get him cured? He doesn't belong here, he doesn't belong here. So the wife replied, actually he does. I need the eggs. I need the eggs. So it's one big world madhouse. The doctor was going to give a reward to a patient in a mental hospital after he saved another patient from suicide attempt. He pulled him out of the bathtub. So the doctor summoned this hero and he thought, so maybe I should discharge him. So he said, look into your file, take into account your heroic behavior. I'm very confident that you are ready to be allowed home now. Only one bad news I need to tell you. I'm sorry that the man you saved later killed himself with a rope around his neck. He killed himself with a rope around his neck. So he said, no, 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 doctor, you got it wrong. He didn't kill himself, doctor. He didn't kill himself. I hung him up so he could dry. I hung him up so he could dry himself. So in the world of this dunya of insanity, we need to become amongst the same people. The amal for today is, inna lillahi khalqan khalqahum li hawaijin nas, the creation of Allah, who Allah has created them for the needs of mankind. 
so allah chooses people for the khidma for the service of humanity people throng and flock towards him for their needs so when people come to you don't look at it as a bad thing and dispel them no look at it as, a, as an honor that allah sent somebody to you these people who helped the creation of Allah, they got a guarantee of protection from Allah's punishment in dunya and akhirah. In other riwayat, if they do not utilize this wealth and these bounties which Allah has given them, Allah snatches all these bounties away from them and hands it over to somebody else. Wa akhiru da'wana. أن الحمد لله رب العالمين